Good morning. This is the third Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he sat set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. May only God's word be spoken and only God's word heard. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel passage from Luke contains, some very many, contains many interesting elements. In the first portion of the gospel, we heard about Jesus coming into the village of the, of the Samaritans and not being received by them because, as the gospel says, his face was toward, turned toward Jerusalem. Now, the Samaritans were the closest cousins and enemies of the people of Israel, and they believed that their temple which was not located in Jerusalem, was really the true temple. And this was the source of conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans for many, many, many centuries. And it persisted on into the uh, time of Jesus. And this is one of the reasons why Jesus often tried to evangelize, if you will, the Samaritans as well as the people of Israel or Jerusalem uh, during the course of his ministry. And then you have this curious scene of James and John saying to Jesus, obviously these people are turning you away. Should we call fire down upon them as if that was going to be a punishment? As if they were taken by the power that they had in themselves through Jesus, thinking that they could then go ahead and condemn people who turned away from Jesus. And Jesus rather oddly rebukes them, not the people who turned him away. And he moves on, he goes on to where he will have more fruitful fields, if you will. And then as he's going on the road toward Jerusalem, he's encountering various individuals. And we have people making professions of faith and trust and willingness to follow Jesus. And Jesus sets up some conditions and each of the people in some way or another balks at the conditions that they have been given by Jesus. On the one hand, he says, I have no place to live. If you follow me, you will have no place to live. 
Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And you can expect the same thing if you become a follower of mine. To another, he said, No, let the dead bury their own dead, which feels like a harsh thing to say unless we realize that the life that Jesus is offering is a life that transcends not only the temptations of the flesh, but also some of the obligations and the rituals that would have been part of the culture of the time. Jesus is saying, no, everything is new, everything is changed. Don't go back to those dead people. Follow us who are alive with a new life in, in God through me, the Christ. And then we finally have the, uh, the, the last sentence where he says, no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And this is an oblique reference to the Old Testament reading of the day, which is the calling of Elisha by Elijah, where Elijah comes and places his mantle on Elisha while Elisha is um, plowing the field with a team of oxen. And Elisha says to Elijah, please let me go back and say hello to my, or, or goodbye to my, to my parents. And Elijah recognizes that to such a young person as Elisha, this is probably a big ask for him to become the successor prophet to Elijah himself. So it's, it calls out the Old Testament lesson, but they're not to be understood necessarily in the same, in the same vein. But we are to understand that the call that Jesus makes directly on our lives is a call that places on us obligations that cause us to have to leave behind those things in which we take comfort, those things to which we are used to, and those things that we believe or have been taught are more important than the life that is being offered to us through Christ and through the life that Jesus promises in God. Amen.